Hello, Joe here. I'm a musician, I'm a composer, and I like talking about music right here on this channel for your eyeballs to consume. So today, I will be talking about architecture. And I know what you're thinking, hmm, architecture. It doesn't sound very musical. Well, I'll get to that. This video is about the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, also known as the Duomo Firenze, the Dome of Fire. So named for its characteristic giant red dome. The cathedral has a very rich and interesting history, dating back all the way to its consecration in the 15th century. And as a church, which I wrote a little bit of music about, which will be the end of this video if you're interested. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to be told when I upload, which I try to do weekly, but I'm not very good at that. And also consider donating to my my Patreon if you want to see more stuff that's like this. Anyway, on with the video. The first cathedral to be built close to the site that would become home to the Cathedrale Santa Maria del Fiore was called the Basilica di San Lorenzo di Firenze, such long names, consecrated in AD 393 by St. Ambrose of Milan, also known as Megamind. This was the first Catholic church to be built in Florence, dating back all the way to the late Roman times. The building would stand for hundreds of years, and by the time of the 13th century, the church was crumbling apart. The local Catholic establishment decided, in 1294, that the city's growing population needed a new figure for their religion, and so the plans for the Duomo Firenze were approved. Choosing to build on top of the smaller cathedral of Santa Reparata, the first stone would be laid on the 9th of September 1296. Nowadays, with modern technology and new building techniques, we're used to construction projects taking three or four years, maybe up to a decade if, if it's really out there. But this was absolutely not the case 700 years ago. Even with the fabulously advanced late medieval technology that people had back then, including hamster wheels and rocks, this project took a total of 140 years to build. To put this into perspective, the oldest person to have ever lived on record reached the age of 122. Not a single person who started building the cathedral lived to see the end of it. That, if nothing, is dedication. So, after 140 years of construction, minus that one year they lost in 1348 due to the Black Death, um, the Duomo Firenze was finally finished. The cathedral was, and remains, a feat of engineering and design. The exterior was huge and magnificent, boasting giant bronze doors, which Michelangelo said looked like the gates of paradise, and housing the largest brick dome to have ever been constructed, even to this day. The interior was just as decadent, with a giant void for housing a congregation of hundreds and mosaic tiling across the entire floor. The sprawling fresco within the interior of the dome, started by Giorgio Vasari and then redone by Federico Zuccari because he hated Vasari's style, but I won't get into that because it's a separate drama in itself, wouldn't actually arrive until 1579. But when it finally did, people didn't really like it anyway. <laughs> Frescoes in dome interiors, called a cupola, are extremely difficult to look at because they're tens of meters up, are contained within basically a dark hole, and end up hidden by centuries of dirt. It was restored in the 70s and 80s though, so thankfully we can now enjoy Zuccari's work a little better. To celebrate the consecration of the cathedral, the composer, see we're getting to the music, Guillaume de Fay, was commissioned by the Catholic Church to create a motet, essentially a medieval musical form, to be sung within the cathedral's great chamber. The piece was called Nupa Rosarum Flores, the rose blossoms recently, referring to the flower in the name of the cathedral itself, Santa Maria del Fiore. This piece was composed in classical medieval counterpoint, which involves multiple voices operating independently, but guided by strict rules in their interaction, in a musical texture known as polyphony. The music was set against the Cantus Firmus, basically a medieval backing track, Terribilis est locus iste, Magnificent is this place, which was a Gregorian chant which had been used to celebrate the consecration of new churches for hundreds of years. Cathedrals are designed to carry the voice of a priest across many tens of meters to the congregation, so you can only imagine how resplendent the music would have sounded back then to the people in the church. 
My piece, which will be played at the end of this video if you're interested, is actually made up completely of material pulled and reordered from this motet, Lupa Rosarum Flores. The Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore would go on to have a very rich history up into the modern day, having hosted the seat of the Council of Florence and witnessed the assassination of Giuliano di Piero de' Medici, a co-ruler of the city, by the Pazzis, as part of a conspiracy to remove the Medici family as rulers of Renaissance Florence and replace them with a Pazzi family, or Pazzi. Pazzi or Pazzi, I'm not sure. Giuliano was struck in the head by a sword and then stabbed 19 times during high mass, and all of this was orchestrated in part by Pope Sixtus IV himself, who was an enemy of the Medici family. Drama. Interestingly, and on a lighter note, the decoration of the exterior wouldn't actually be finished until 1887, literally 500 years after it was started. These bitches are lazy. Now it's fun to glorify these fantastic, amazing works of architecture, but it's also important to remember the more subtle reasons for why they were built in the first place. Cathedrals were designed by the Catholic Church, an institution which, at the time, controlled basically all of Europe, and benefited massively from the feudal hierarchies common all across the continent. The church wanted to maintain these hierarchies, and one of the ways in which it did this was through architecture. The cathedral, in its splendour, was used as a symbol for the grandeur and might of God, and therefore the Catholic Church. A grandeur that will outlast any human life, and is impossible and useless to fight against. The cathedral, whether consciously or not, was designed to remind people for miles around to acknowledge and accept their place in the feudal hierarchy in which they had been born. A hierarchy which, for the vast majority, meant living in serfdom, literally slavery. These grand displays of wealth and abundance were put there as a promise to the oppressed masses that if they keep their head down, pay fealty to their lords, and live a pious life, their suffering will be rewarded in the world to come. That's what the Catholic Church was subtly trying to say with the construction of these buildings. That Christianity always has existed, always will exist, will forever be unchallengeable. This is the more dark and subtle truth behind many of our beloved works of architecture. But looking back from the 21st century, I think that we can both acknowledge their dark past of oppression, murder, and general drama, and enjoy these buildings for what they are. Beautiful. And with that final comment, here is my piece from the gift of the Pope. That's the name, I know it doesn't make any sense. A response to Guillaume de Fay's Nupa Rosarum Flores, 600 years after the fact, performed by the wonderfully talented Alicia Kozak and Cole Morrison.
Thank mm-hmm. you.